Just last week in Washington, D.C., the 19th International AIDS Conference took place, where a bunch of cool, smart activists and researchers got together to discuss ideas to prevent HIV infection. So what could the drug policy dealer possibly have to say about HIV? She doesn't care about people or diseases, you know, the really important stuff. It just so happens that I have a lot to say about HIV because one in five injecting drug users worldwide are infected with it. But before we start blaming drug users for the whole entire world's problems, let's first talk about injection drugs and the harms associated with it. Oh, yeah. First off, let's make this clear. With any kind of drug use, there is always a risk of harm. But the degree of harm is on a spectrum. Let's take alcohol as an example. You hear a lot about the worst case scenario. Overdose deaths, drunk driving, passing out and having to get your stomach pumped. But there is a best case scenario, which would look like safe and responsible drinking, staying hydrated, getting home safely, and ideally waking up the next day without a hangover. The difference between the best case scenario and the worst case scenario is whether the drug user is doing everything they possibly can to reduce the number of negative consequences to the very minimum. The professional term for this magical idea is called harm reduction, reducing the harms of a dangerous activity through preparations and actions, such as putting on your seatbelt before you drive and checking your mirror before you change lanes. Get it? And the same idea can be extended to injection drugs like cocaine, heroin, and Oxycontin. These drugs can also be smoked or snorted. Different methods of taking drugs also have different degrees of risks and harms and can also be visualized on a spectrum. Drug injection is the most harmful because the risk of overdose is the greatest. The drug goes directly into the bloodstream and with an illegal market, the user can never really be sure of the concentration of the drug that they're injecting. It's also a pretty common practice to share needles, which increases the risk of spreading HIV and hepatitis C. But even though on the spectrum drug injection is the most harmful method, there are still ways to reduce the risks of this method through a harm reduction strategy. This harm reduction strategy is called needle exchanges, and it prevents against the spread of HIV and also protects injection drug users. Needle exchange programs offer access to clean syringes and other injecting equipment such as swabs and sterile water. The use of clean needles each and every time would greatly reduce the risk of passing HIV from person to person. Injection drug users can also turn in their used needles and syringes and get back sterile equipment, which is good for everyone because otherwise needles would just get disposed anywhere. In the playground, on the beach, at school. Many drug policy activists have consistently said that drug use is a public health issue. We need to regulate it because it's healthy for the public. These programs also offer safer sex and drug education. Believe it or not, injection drug users still have sex lives. And so the sexual partners of injection drug users typically have an increased risk of contracting HIV and then ultimately passing it on to their children, which is why education is so, so, so important. These services have been proven to get users to stop and reduce drug injections, and for people who still use, they can get them to use more safely through the proper tools and education. Doesn't that sound awesome? Well, unfortunately, in the world of drug policy, there is always bad news. So here it is. Even though this HIV reduction method has been consistently proven to be super effective, because there are programs that have to do with injecting drugs and drug users, they've been very low on many nations' lists of priorities. And why is that? Listen, girl, if you give heroin users more needles, they will just use more heroin more often. It will teach our kids that it's okay to use heroin because they'll always have more clean needles. Yeah. That's what Congress thought, which is why they recently passed a bill to cut off all federal funding to needle exchange programs in the United States. But encouraging safety and education about a dangerous activity is not the same as encouraging the dangerous activity itself. Like installing airbags so that car passengers can be safer when they drive isn't the same as encouraging the driver to crash. It worked in England, it worked in Australia, Canada, and Amsterdam. And Amsterdam has one of the world's highest rates of injection drug use. So if they can do it, I don't see why we can't. Amsterdam also once had one of the worst drug-associated HIV epidemics. Today, HIV incidence amongst injection drug users in Amsterdam has fallen to almost zero. See what happens when you don't care about drug policy. Prevention is cheaper than treatment. Just like preventing someone from using drugs in the first place is cheaper than treating someone for drug addiction, preventing someone from contracting HIV is cheaper than treating someone for the virus for the rest of their life. 
The point is that with a drug as dangerous as heroin and with a method as dangerous as drug injections, there are still better ways to handle the topic than incarceration and ignorance. By staying educated, guys, you can stay sensible.